you think about it, SNS Santa are really like the biggest innovators in the coaster industry. I mean, it really started when they brought Arrow, and that's they're like the original coaster manufacturer. And when their first and their biggest at the time innovation was they revolutionized one of the most popular drop tower concepts. I mean, come on, they're a good company because they revolutionized the drop tower. I mean, go to your local park and they will use an air launch a drop tower. It's probably an SNS that they revolutionized. They took this and then turned it into this and then improved upon it again and made it this. Max Force is like so good and they're building a new version at a Six Flags Park. I personally think it'll be over Georgia because they currently lack a launch coaster. Yeah, they have a very solid lineup except a launch coaster. SNS is sort of on the milder sort of price size, but it's, it's not cheap, but it's not expensive. Um, bullet coaster at um, Happy Valley Shenzhen is about 16 million and well that's not the official price but if you compare other air launch coasters and I think with the theming around bullet coaster it's around that amount so it's 16 million USD yes the Happy Valley train have the money to spend on like B&M's and Intamin's no RMC's though um, I'm not really sure why. If any of you guys know, let me know in the comments. Because I have no idea. But the fact that Six Flags could afford an air launch coaster is insane. I do think that behind the scenes they have some sort of ride contract. I mean, four 4D free spins in the last three years, I think. There may be more, so I don't know you'll probably let me know in the comments but come on like if six flags can afford it surely anyone can they went through bankruptcy and they tried to be as cheap as possible ring racer at Nuremberg, i hope i've said that right is the new generation of sns air launch coasters that's not official but it's it sort of is it uses a new track style which is similar to the coma's new track style They've also been bought by SNS, so it makes sense. Which has one circular rail in the middle, and then the two main rails, which are connected to the main middle rail. Whereas um, Dodo Dompa and Hypersonic XLC had used a traditional H beam style track, but it was a little bit wider then, so yeah. SNS had improved on the failure of Hypersonic XLC and the success of Dodo Domper and they sort of put everything that they knew into this new generation and Ring Racer failed because it exploded but that wasn't SNS's fault that was Nuremberg's um, because they were in financial difficulty and they wanted it as a tourist th thing to just say we've got the world's fastest roller coaster if, if that makes sense I'm not really I don't want to get into the details here but that's basically what happened. Uh, but then the Happy Valley chain bought two clones, which one of them I've already talked about, Bullet Coaster, and the other one I think is called OCT Thrust SSC1000. That's a longer name than Hadrix, Hagrid's, again, I'm saying that full name. Um, the thing the only other company that's probably had just as much if not more innovation than sns would be intamin i mean you know intamin created the, the world's first lsm coaster the world's first hydraulic launch coaster which is the most similar to the air launch coaster they created the world's tallest coaster multiple times they created the world's most inversions coaster they were innovative in the 90s to 2000s but here's the difference between 90s Intamin and 2000s, 2010 SNS. One had innovation, but with innovation came problems. One has innovation and has no problems. One is Intamin, the first one. The second one is SNS. Axis. The Axis seems to be one of the most innovative 
and new and unique coaster models since the 4D coaster. It looks really exciting. And they took, the, in my opinion, the most underrated Arrow model, the suspended coaster, and combined it with, with what is arguably the best Arrow model, the 4D coaster. And you get this, the Axis, which oh, it's so exciting. I'm so excited for it. <laughs> The layouts, you'll be able to have crazier layouts because there won't be quite as many inversions. You need oh, you can have more you could have more inversions. Oh it just it looks so good and you know they put an air launch on there. The most forceful and highest acceleration launch in the world. But it was a bit slower on the prototype but they could make it they could make an 100 mile per hour axis coaster i mean come on how cool would that be something to say it's not free spinning it's very similar to time traveler in how it works at silver dollar city that it's sort of free spinning but it's controlled by magnets and it's just it looks so good, the Axis. I, ca I can't wait for it. Overall, SNS is the biggest innovators. I mean, just look at it. They've created Edronica, which is the best 4D coaster in the world. No doubt, they've created Free Spins, which are a cheaper version of 4D coasters, and they're way of bringing it to closer parks. And you've, they've got the Axis coming out, which just... I've already spoken about the Axis, and the air launch is the most forceful launch since the hydraulic launch, but this one actually works right and you don't have hours of downtime. I mean, s, &S. Yeah. There are some criticism of it, it's not the cheapest, and some then they're fairly reliable, but not the most reliable. But I think this is the start of an SNS revolution, really. Yeah, I haven't even mentioned Castaway at Playland Cove in New Jersey. I think that's right. Which I think I'm going to try and get another video about that because that's a whole different thing about how companies are trying to copy the Skyrocket 2, which the Skyrocket 2 in itself is the new Vacoma SLC. But I will talk about that in another video. Overall, I'm excited. I've said overall already. I'm excited to see what the future holds for this innovative and new, ambitious company.